We're here to talk about the exciting news around Oracle Database at Microsoft Azure. We're joined by Karan Bada. He is the Senior Vice President for Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, as well as, I'm going to give this a shot, Madan Arumagam Ramakrishnan, Microsoft's Corporate Vice President of Industry Cloud and Partner Engineering. Thank you both for joining us. How'd I do? You did good. Okay, close, it. close. It was pretty good. Okay, good. Had to give it a shot. All right, we're going to start, Karan, with the big news. Yep. Uh, Oracle Database at Azure. Give us a breakdown of it. Yeah, so I mean, I think to step back a little bit, right, to give some context, right, because I think uh, obviously the product announcement's really great, but this has been sort of a very long journey that led to this step, right? It was the logical step. So back in 2019, we connected our clouds together. We kind of solved the biggest challenge, which was the network uh, data movement transfers. And then we moved on to last year, giving a little bit more of an integrated experience. And what customers really wanted was the ability to uh, have a singular experience, and that's what this really this product announcement really is. It's the ability for an Azure customer to just go and use Oracle Database Service, just like they would in any other native Azure service, for that matter. The delta here being is the fact that OCI actually runs inside Azure at the space, so that we can you know, solve things like latency issues, performance issues, and then also combining with Microsoft's commercial model, customers are able to pay for that service using Microsoft dollars. And, and when you say um, in Azure, that means also using Azure credits to, to start up workloads and... Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you already have an existing Microsoft commitment, you're able to essentially purchase the Oracle database services through that experience using your dollars and consume it using those dollars as well. Okay, Maran, um, we kind of heard a little bit just right now from, from Karan in terms of some of the challenges that we were trying to overcome for our customers, but can we dive deeper into that? What challenges will Oracle Database at Azure really address? Yeah, I think there is two key challenges you know, in the evolution of our partnership uh, when we work with customers. One is these are mission critical line of business applications. They are extremely sensitive to kind of the latency needs, throughput needs. So Oracle Database at Azure is the first time we are bringing together the best of Oracle technology and the Microsoft technology in the same data center. And what this means for a customer is they don't have to kind of worry about these latency sensitive applications and their movement to cloud. Now they can depend upon both Microsoft and Oracle to bring the best of both technologies in the same data centers, in the same familiar interface that they're used to, which is the Azure APIs. Karan, we've talk, you talked a little bit about how this is an evolution from the interconnect that we had before, and you just talked about some of the latency advantages. Are there any other differences in this versus previous offerings? I mean, I think it's the experience throughout, right? I mean, I think um, if you think about the difference, it's, it's really when OCI, like if you think about normal regions today for, for OCI, we have so many different data centers within a single region, this essentially allows us to expand OCI natively into Azure from a physical standpoint. We're also doing it from a logical standpoint too. And so customers that are building really mission critical apps like Madan talked about, really need that super low latency. I'm talking like single digit, hundreds of microseconds, uh, you know, between the application and the database. With Exadata being natively inside Azure, that allows that now, right? That didn't happen before. And really the, the difference is like interconnect is very much a generic concept, right? It's the ability to move data between two clouds, have the ability to, um, to really just build any application. This is just much more specific so that, um, and then the exciting part honestly for me is all the different kinds of applications that customers will be able to build with native integrations of database into other Azure services. Okay, Madan, we're hearing about the outcomes right now. You've explained that really well, but can we take it a step back? What led to this expanded partnership? Customers. I mean, it's a very simple answer. You know, they've been asking, you know, both, you know, Oracle and Microsoft, like we want to be able to kind of build applications using both your technology. They're doing this today in on-premises, right? And as they think about moving to cloud and innovating, uh, I mean, Clay and Judson talked about, you know, the power of generative AI. That is such a rush, an AI gold rush. And this needs to kind of impact, you know, day-to-day -day life, day-to-day -day applications that we all touch and use. 
And that's, I think, the main reason. We came together, we are continuing to kind of evolve our engineering roadmap, our commercial roadmap, because customers are frankly asking for it. Uh, and you know, like Clay mentioned in his uh, session, finally, you know, this yeah. is kind of the response we get, it's overwhelmingly positive. The commercial model is also important. Like one of the things that you know, uh, customers uh, are asking us is like, look, I have commitments with Oracle, I have unlimited license agreement, I have commitments with Microsoft, I have these Mac arrangements, and I want to be able to use both when I build these applications. I don't need to be able to go do one things in one location and another things in another location. It just doesn't work fundamentally. So I think it's about appreciating you know, customers uh, you know, need for choice and building what they need from a product point of view. As Larry talked about making it slim, more simple, and as Safra talked about putting our customers at the heart of everything, we're really right. hitting that right now. So you both talked about the, the, all the potential advantages for customers. It's been uh, eight days since we <laughs> rolled this out. Well, what's been the response from customers? The uh, response has been phenomenal, right? I mean, Madan summed it up perfectly. I think so did Judson, finally, right? To give you an example, right, we had, yesterday I was with Corey uh, from Microsoft, and. You know, we had uh, Voya uh, as part of our uh, keynote, and Marino, uh, you know, graciously joined us on stage. I think the thing that sort of summarized it, he said, "I'm 100% on Azure, but 70% of my technology stack is Oracle." That is the model customer for what this service looks like, right? You are, you've already invested in Microsoft Azure, and you have already invested a huge amounts of effort and energy into Oracle stack. You need those two companies to work together. And so I think customers are just you know, overjoyed. And I mean, the example that he used was, you know, prior to the announcement, eight days ago, um, you know, he had set up uh, an offsite for his technical leaders to solve the challenge of how do you get this stuff to work together. And then the announcement happened, he canceled the offsite. I have my answer. So I think that's, again, as I said, the model example uh, and, and sort of the feedback that we've been getting across the board. Fantastic, when's it available? Uh, well, Honestly, people can start running some stuff now in POCs. Um, you know, we're going to have regions available before the end of the year. Um, and then we've talked about multiple regions across the globe, in US, in Europe, and then we're going to expand to 12 regions over the course of the next several months. Fantastic. Maran, Karan, thank you so much for joining us.